This isn't gonna be your normal how to pay for your flight training video. I'm not gonna tell you to get sponsored by an airline or find a cadet ship. No, you want to fly and you know how expensive it can be and you want ideas and tips on how to afford it. Of course, you want your own flying freedom, but that sort of freedom isn't cheap. So you may not like what you hear in this video, but I'm not gonna dance around the subject. If you want to fly and you're struggling to afford to fly, you're gonna to have to make some changes. If you're new to the channel, I'm Steph. I'm a private pilot here in Australia and I've been flying for around 12 years. I paid my own way through my flight training, but during that time, there were occasions when I just didn't have the money to keep flying. There's one year when my company wasn't doing all that well. I distinctly remember only having one flight. I flew once in the entire year. That's all I could afford because I wasn't actually paying myself a salary at the time. And when times like that happen to you, I figure you have one of three choices. You can just stop flying altogether. You can decide to take on some debt to pay for your flight training, or you can find new ways to earn or save money. I got through the tough times by using a combination of all three. And so I've divided this video up to try and help you do the same into three key sections. Some general financial tips, some ways that you can save and ways that you can reduce your overall cost of flying. So let's start with some general financial tips. Firstly, and most importantly, life has to come first. And just like with flying when you need fuel reserves, with life, you need financial reserves. Open up a fee-free account, call it something like fixed reserve, don't touch. This is your emergency grocery shopping funds for when your heating fails in winter time, when the car needs fixing. It's not for flying, it's not for fun, but just like you can't fly without your fuel reserves, you shouldn't start thinking about learning to fly without some financial reserves as well. Pick an amount, something like $1,000 is good, and use the tips in this video to save that amount into that account, and only when you get to that level, then you can start saving for your flying. Next up, you need to determine your goal. What are you actually going for with your flying? Is it your recreational pilot's license, your private pilot's license, commercial, airline? Go talk to some flying schools and ask them each to give you a plan. And that's a written plan, not just a chat. Make sure they cover the instructor, the plane, and the total cost of the exercise. Then compare and see which instructor and plane and cost combination works best for you. If you're lucky enough to have a few airports around you, don't just choose the airport that's closest. Go out to the ones that might be a slightly further drive, but they might have cheaper training costs and cheaper landing fees that might actually make the additional distance that you have to travel worth it. Now you found your flying school, your instructor and your plane and you know how much the whole thing is gonna cost, it's actually quite tempting to just obsess over that massive number. And if you do that, you're not gonna get anywhere. So take your goal and cut it down into smaller, achievable and more affordable chunks. So whilst you might be here at the moment and say eventually you want your private pilot's license, it can be scary to think that there's a lot of money between you and getting to that point. However, cut all of that down into the key market milestones and focus on them one at a time. For example, your first solo, then your first cross-country solo, then your theory exam, and then your private pilot's license check ride, and budget and pay for each part at a time. Even if that means you have a little gap in between to get back on top of your finances for the next step, by breaking the larger cost down into smaller chunks, it's less daunting and you're more likely to achieve each step. Now, before talking about ways to save, just one word of caution. If you've spoken to your flight school and they've come to you with a fixed price lump sum as a slight discount on what you would pay if you pay an hourly rate, be very cautious about putting a lump sum of money down with an organization unless you really, really know them and you have some sort of guarantee of what's gonna happen to your lump sum if something bad happens to that flight school. Once you have your fixed reserve in place and you have an idea of how much your flight training is gonna cost you, this is where you need to start getting creative with ways to save that money. Your first and easiest step is to cut your expenses. Go into your credit card statements, export the last three months, and highlight everything in there that's a luxury item. I'm talking about Netflix, Foxtel, whatever cable you have, Amazon Prime, takeaways, restaurants, breakfasts, all the times that you've gone out and watched a movie. Find all those subscriptions and cancel those luxury items. Now, if you can't or don't want to cancel those items, one other thought is you can actually get in touch with a lot of these companies and say to them you're thinking of canceling. Can they give you some sort of reduction in the subscription fee that you pay. You'll be surprised what companies will offer you in order just to keep you on as a customer, especially if you've been with them for a while. And I don't switch off, but this is the thing that you're probably not gonna like the most in this video, but you need to hear it. If you're serious about generating more income or saving on your expenses, you're really gonna need to set up a monthly budget. Ah! It doesn't have to be complex, a simple monthly budget. Just put your income in one column and all your expenses in the other. Go through those expenses and see if there are any that you can take out. And at the end of the exercise, have a look at what's coming in versus what's going out. And if what's going out is more than what's coming in, 
you're gonna need to make some changes. If you can't cut any more of your expenses, you're gonna need to look at your income. Are there other ways that you can generate money? Do you have a spare room in the house that you can lease to somebody? Yeah, of course, nobody wants another person in their house, but if you really need the income, it's potentially a way that you can do it. If you don't own a property or you don't have a spare room, what can you sell? eBay is a brilliant way to try and generate some short-term, quick money just by having a look at the things lying around your house that you really don't need and you can sell. That includes technology, which sells really well, clothing does well, books, entertainment, CDs. If Christmas is coming up or you have a birthday soon, talk to friends and family and tell them that you're trying to save for your flying career. And then instead of having presents, which at the end of the day, you'll probably end up selling on eBay anyway, Ask them just to put money directly into your flying account. And when it comes to flying gear, remember you don't need the latest gear. Don't think that you need a pair of noise cancelling Bose A20s, however amazing they are, when you start flying. You don't even need your own headset when you start flying. Your flying school probably has one that you can ask if you can borrow. With one exception, which is my recent instrument rating, for every other theory exam I've done in the past, the moment I pass that exam, I've sold the theory book. And I've done that for two reasons. The first one is so I can continue to pay for some of my flight training through that money that goes straight into my flying account. And the second reason is, those books go out of date. Just before I talk about ways to reduce your overall flight costs, I wanna answer one question which you may be thinking right now, which is, should I go into debt in order to pay for my flight training? Debt for the sake of just speeding something up is not the way to do it. You've gotta ask yourself, why do you have to start learning to fly now? Why do you need to go into that debt now? If it's just because I want to do it now, because everyone else is doing it now, because I think there's a pilot shortage and it's a good time to do it, I don't necessarily think those are good reasons to get yourself into debt now. Why not wait a year and get a second job, maybe at the weekends working at the airport so you can gain some experience in the environment you're gonna be working in and you're earning additional money that you can put into your flying account instead of going into debt. Because debt in itself, whilst it can be useful sometimes, it's also expensive. Be very careful about expensive loans like credit cards or taking out a personal loan from a bank or a financial organization. Just looking at a $30,000 loan over a five year payback, that's over $42,000 you're gonna be paying back, an additional 12,000 on top of what you borrowed. And if you have $12,000 just lying around that you can afford to give straight to the bank, then you're probably not watching this video anyway. If you absolutely have to take on debt and you have reasons for doing it and you have a plan for how you're gonna pay it back, consider asking people close to you. Consider asking family or friends. If you can have something in writing between you, an actual formal agreement, but with an interest rate that's either a lot lower than what the banks are gonna be offering or preferably no interest rate whatsoever, you're just repaying the money that you borrowed over time. And if you do insist on using a credit card to take on debt and to pay for flight training, please do your research and make sure that you're getting a credit card which has got a low or 0% introductory rate for a couple of years and by the time that interest rate goes back up to the 12, 14, sometimes higher percentages that it will go back to, you've paid back what you've borrowed on that credit card. So then what about ways to actually reduce your overall flying costs? Think about home studying your theory rather than doing it with a third party. If you need to get theory books, see if you can buy them secondhand online or borrow them from your flying school. Try and do those exams early. In most situations, that theory exam, once you've passed it, it doesn't expire. If you study yourself and you buy your books online secondhand, you can actually save some money up front and you're also a little bit more educated when you get to the point of flying, which should actually make the process of learning to fly a lot easier. Go back to the flying school that you're gonna to learn to fly with and ask them if they've got any paid work available at the weekends. And that could be anything from moving aircraft, pumping gas in aircraft, cleaning them, washing windows, whatever it might be. And even if they don't have any paid work, ask them if they'd consider any contra work. And what I mean by that is, Everybody has a skill. You watching this have something that you can offer the flight school which is valuable for them. And instead of them paying you in cash, ask them to pay you in flight time. When I was having that quiet spell I spoke about when I couldn't afford to fly, so I only flew once that year, what I was doing in the meantime was I was building a bunch of websites because software development and tech, that's my background. I was building websites for flight training organizations and for companies that owned aircraft in return for hours on those planes. Now you don't have to be a website builder, it could be anything. I mean, if you know social media, if you use Twitter and Instagram, to be honest, you've probably got a better handle on social media than most flying schools out there. So see if you can run their Instagram account for a couple of months. If you can get business in for them online, they're gonna see a lot of value in you and giving you fly hours in return really isn't gonna cost them that much considering you're helping them get new business. And don't get carried away with thinking you have to learn in the most technically advanced aircraft either. You don't need to learn how to fly in a 
brilliant Cirrus SR22 G6 with full flight into known icing and turbo oxygen. You may end up there, but that's not where you need to start. But equally, don't start too low as well. Don't start with an incredibly basic aircraft just because it's the cheapest one on the airfield because at some point you're going to need to pay more to start getting into more technically advanced aircraft anyway. To reduce your flying costs you want to find an aircraft that meets that sweet spot that has opportunities for you to fly in the future but equally it's still simple to fly and it teaches you the fundamentals. Whatever you do, if all you want to do is go flying, but money is the one thing that's preventing you from going flying, do the one thing that feels most counterintuitive. Slow down. Aviation isn't going anywhere. The temptation to focus on the end goal is huge, of course. We all want to see ourselves as a captain on the flight deck of an A350 or flying ourselves around the world in our own plane. But like anything amazing, it takes time to do it properly. Finding ways to afford to learn how to fly and to fly ongoing is of course a problem, but if you want to become a pilot, then solving problems is going to be a big part of your life. Just treat this exercise of trying to sort out your finances as the first problem that you as a pilot have to calmly and safely solve. If it was easy, then everybody would be doing it, but this video isn't aimed at everybody. This video is aimed at you. You're the solution to the pilot shortage and you're the one that I wanna share the skies with in the future. So I truly hope that these tips help you solve the problem that you need to solve in order to get yourself on with your flight training. I've made this playlist of some of my recent flying adventures, which hopefully will help you and motivate you to get your finances in order and chase your own personal flying freedom. And if you're new to the channel and this video was useful and you haven't subscribed yet, do consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.